the heck are you doing out there? This is Bob All America Hope coming at you from. This isn't Bob All America Hope. I'm just doing my Hope impression from uh, uh, last night. Of course, the Academy Awards was on, and is today going to be all about the Academy Awards? No, not really, but well, I'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, mainly, I guess, well, it, it all depends where uh, where the brain goes and what spits out of it. But uh, I guess I'll be talking about the Capitol protest. I had hoped uh, to, uh, to bring you a whole load of clips. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, that didn't work out, so I'm going to bring a short load of clips. Uh, I, I had like 17 minutes of clips and that was even cut down from uh, 17 minutes of cut clips and that was even cut down from the... Uh, I decided to cut out the clips from yesterday thinking that I wouldn't have time to finish them all and uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're talk a little bit about the Capitol protest uh, and maybe a little bit more and then we'll see some clips about that. We'll talk about other things as well. And oh boy, there is a lot to talk about. Um, uh, is Wisconsin the political center of the world now? Not really, but uh, it's getting a lot of play, that's for sure. Now, did you see... Uh, our uh, esteemed governor on uh, Meet the Press on Sunday with uh, David Gregory. And, uh, yeah, he uh, kind of just spit out his, the same talking points uh, again. And uh, uh, David Gregory asked him a question. He said, this is the last question. Uh, and he referred to the, the phone call I, that... Uh, uh, that he received from uh, the blogger from the Buffalo Beast, I believe, uh, the name of the the paper, or if it's an internet thing, or I don't know what the heck it is. But anyway, uh, this guy pretended to be, to be David Koch, David Koch, David Koch, I think is the pronunciation. And uh, one of the things he uh, talked about was... Uh, getting uh, uh, troublemakers involved in the protest. And uh, uh, David Gregory asked, uh, were you thinking, I can't remember exactly what he asked, but were you thinking about that? And uh, the governor said, no, we rejected that. Well, logically, if, if uh, you rejected it, you had to have been thinking about it. So... Uh, um, you, you really uh, don't know what's going on with that guy. Um, well, I, I guess you do know what's going on with that guy because he, he he's pretty uh, rock solid in his uh, refusal to budge on uh, on collective bargaining. He got uh, what he wanted in terms of uh, concessions from the unions uh, and. Uh, the one thing that uh, the Democrats wouldn't budge on is uh, collective bargaining, and it, it's in an impasse. It's at a stalemate. How is it going to end? Um, it, it's hard to see. It's hard to see how it ends. But uh, one thing, I, I was talking about this a little last week, that uh, that our governor has done is he's um, given uh, this city a little bit of economic activity. Uh, the capital used to be a dead zone, pretty much. Uh, and uh, cars would avoid it. People would avoid the capital square uh, after nightfall. It uh, could ride your bike through the Capitol Square. It was very easy because there was no traffic. There was nothing going on. Now, it's a hotbed of activity, and uh, actually, they're trying to shut that down because uh, they're not allowing... And it's, it, it's confusing as to what is actually happening or what they actually... Uh, 
um, intend to do and who they is. I guess. I guess it's the governor. He probably was not happy coming to work this morning and and finding that the protesters had been there uh, the whole night. I, I think uh, no doubt uh, he's um, kind of getting into a little bit of a siege mentality. Um, and uh, it's must be must be difficult, that is for sure. But uh, the guy shows no uh, uh, he shows no signs that he's going to budge on it. And so, how is this thing going to end? Who knows? Um, but uh, so they're not letting they're not letting people into the Capitol um, until. And and this is unclear um, uh, until all the protesters are out or they're on the first floor or something like that. Uh, I I heard on War Today somebody talking about a law that uh, that uh, a person could not be banned from the Capitol, but I I think that that. Um, probably, and, and I could be wrong, I'm just speculating here, Yeah, that probably uh, means that a specific person could not be banned from the Capitol um, uh, when the Capitol is open, and uh, it, it seems like uh, they think that they have the right to, to make arbitrary rules when the Capitol is open and when it's closed. So now uh, our uh, the capital of uh, of the state is not open for business actually. Well it's it's open for business. Um, if, if you're uh, if you're I guess business uh, you can come in and talk talk to your legislator you can come in and talk uh, to the governor I guess uh, Come in and talk to somebody if you're uh, if you're there on official business and not a protester uh, or or a citizen wanting to walk through the Capitol. But uh, we'll see. It's it's very interesting. I mean, uh, I was talking um, to somebody I knew at at the Capitol uh, a few days ago, and they were really uh, kind of bummed, dejected, and I, I guess they. I don't actually. I wasn't talking to them long enough to know their current situation. If they were a state worker, um, with the possibility of losing their job, that could be the case. Um, but uh, but I, I think I'm I'm, I'm kind of energized and jazzed by the the whole situation, um, and uh, hoping for the best. But. Uh, not expecting it. it. It may get worse before it gets better. And uh, and he's taken more and more steps to, you know, become uh, the dictator of Wisconsin. And uh, maybe it was a little bit far-fetched a while ago to say that, but uh, it's getting closer and closer. Uh, was at the rally, and and uh, that's that's what I'll be showing uh, the clips at the end of the show today. Um, I again I was trying to do uh, uh 17 minutes of clips um going from last uh last Monday uh, I went and shot after my show um to uh to yesterday Sunday when uh, they actually closed the building um I I wanted to get in there but they were only letting people in as uh as people went out, they were limiting the access yesterday. Uh, so uh, I did not get in there. I did not get early there early enough to to get in line. I do know people that were uh, were in line and got in, and and uh, I don't know if they're still there or not. Um, there's not very there's not very many people in there now. Um, I, I guess. Uh, most likely, the people that were there last night have been uh, gradually leaving. Um, so there's uh, not many people in there right now. They're only letting, uh, again, people with official business uh, 
in the Capitol and uh, and press. Uh, and I, I guess I, I had a WYOU press pass, which uh, I think expired. I, I, I got the press pass to go try and cover uh, President Obama um, when he came to town uh, before the election in the fall. And, and I got there, and of course they said, well, you're not on the list. So uh, I mean, even though I had my WYOU press pass... Uh, it didn't. It didn't get me in, uh, in to see the president. That's for sure. Or in, I mean, just in the press area. But say, uh, Levy. Anyway, so uh, talk a little bit about the Oscars. Uh, um, not, not the greatest, um, most memorable. Uh, Oscar show ever, um, Anne Hathaway was pretty good as uh, one of the co-hosts. Uh, uh, she, she, the kid showed some spunk, and yeah, the, um, uh, Billy Crystal was on there and uh, talked a little bit about Bob Hope. Uh, uh, Billy Crystal was uh, was uh, at the Oscars at at some point in time and uh, saw Bob Hope in the audience and um, and uh, asked Bob to stand up and take a take a bow and he did and uh, then uh, Bob Hope flipped him the bird uh, after the camera was off him. Um, but anyway, um, anyway, yeah, I tell you, this is Bob All America Hope. Yeah, I did a a Bob Hope impression for a. A show at Broom Street Theater called The Sitcom Family. My buddy Marty Mohern wrote and directed it, and uh, I, I, it, not an easy impression to learn, but uh, once I learned it, I, I still got it. It's 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 in there somewhere, and it. Uh, I do Ed Sullivan, which uh, if uh, if you remember. Um, or uh, around uh, around the holidays, there was a W O R W Y O U, W O R Y O U R O R T Y O U W Y O U's Christmas uh, uh, or holiday uh, fundraiser. Um, I was uh, introducing the bands uh, that were playing for that, and uh, I introduced them. A couple days, maybe, as D.W. Wanberg, and then I came in as Ed Sullivan, and once they got Ed Sullivan, they didn't want D.W. back, that's for sure. So uh, I uh, introduced the rest of the bands as Ed Sullivan, and then that was fun. That was fun, that's for sure. Uh, I, I can't seem to improvise as much uh, doing Bob Hope. I'm at least improvising for a stretch. I, I can spit out a few lines as Bob Holm. But uh, I, I can improvise as Ed Sullivan and just say whatever wacky thing comes into my head. Um, though I, I, I did try and work out the stuff in advance, at least, uh, for the the big fundraising drive. That's, uh, how did that work, anyway? Anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, Anne Hathaway was pretty good. Uh, she had, what did they say, 8, 10, 11, do I hear 12 um, costume changes? Uh, or, or, I don't know if they actually would be considered costume changes or uh, dress changes. One was a tuxedo, although uh, definitely tailored for her figure. Um, so I guess it would be called a gal's tuxedo. <laughs> um, and... Uh, and looking looking pretty hot in in uh, in all the clothes that she was wearing, that's for sure. Uh, and James Franco, I mean, uh, he did all right, I guess. Uh, you really you really want on that show a comedian that can come up with material or at least <laughs> deliver material. Uh, um, Fed by the writer, writers um, during the show. I mean, in case something funny happens, which uh, uh, something funny did it. Uh, Kirk Douglas got on stage and uh, 
and I can't remember the gal's name. Do I have uh, do I have that list of the winners in front of me? No, I don't. No, I do not. Um, and uh, well, Kirk Douglas uh, gave the award for uh, best supporting actress for the gal in the fighter, and uh, didn't just did not want to get off the stage at, at ninety four. His, he figured this was it, and he uh, did not want to give up the stage for anything. So I uh, kept uh, hanging around after he had, uh, well, first of all, he delayed, uh, uh, delayed actually announcing the award, and uh, and delayed leaving, just stood right, right by uh, after the award was presented, and uh, <laughs> um. What are they going to do to Kirk Douglas? Uh, you'll never appear on this show again, Kirk. But anyway, so that was that was pretty funny. And and when she, the gal, uh, again I don't remember her name, um, gave the speech, which was kind of interesting. She was uh, looking up into the and uh, threw off the f bomb. Which I have I ever done that on this show? Yeah, possibly. Um, of course, they had the the seven second delay or whatever it was, and, and cut it out. Um, but you could certainly tell um, what word she used. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, a comedian uh, would have uh, used that, uh, had some material on that, and delivered some funny lines, but. Uh, Nope, not with uh, not with actors. Uh, uh, anyway, so I th I think that they uh, need to return to the format of uh, of comedians uh, hosting that show. I think uh, uh, the show needs the show needs life. Although Anne Hathaway did uh, give it a lot of life. Um, uh, the show needs uh, a lively host to uh, a lively comedian host to uh, uh, move it along. That's for sure, or or, or push it along, um, uh, not make it seem so long. And and again, it it uh, one of the things that made it uh, seem long, um, the fact that it was long. Although actually, it seemed. Like one of the shorter Oscar shows, uh, uh, they said that it was going to end at end at ten thirty, and it ended like at ten thirty five, ten thirty seven, something like that. Um, so it uh, ended almost on time for the Oscars. Um, but uh, again, one of the the things that made it. Uh, seem longer is that all the predicted winners uh won i mean um uh colin firth firth uh won uh best actor uh and uh anyway uh, and, and uh, best supporting actors um those were the ones predicted to win um and uh, the King's Speech uh, won Best Picture, and that was predicted to win. Although uh, uh, the Social Network was was kind of a uh, a dark horse, a dark horse to win. Um, that was winning some of the earlier uh, uh, award shows, but uh, then it kind of the momentum uh, moved over to the King's Speech, and I I guess. Uh, I did. I did want to touch a little bit on uh, on Charlie Sheen. Um, he uh, was on both uh, ABC and uh, and NBC morning shows uh, this morning. Um, uh, for ABC, I, I guess it was just an, an excerpt for a, a special, a very special 2020 tomorrow, and uh, NBC it was just an interview for the Today Show. Um, which they're going to continue tomorrow, but uh, very very interesting guy. That is that is for sure. And uh, of, of course he um, CBS pulled the plug. Um, do I have a plug here? Yeah, I got 
plenty of plugs. Here we go. Pull the plug on uh, on a two and a half men for uh, the rest of the season, and uh, who knows? Who knows when? And uh, Charlie Sheen was saying that uh, due to all the mental anguish they've been giving him, he's uh, um, asking for three million dollars an episode. He gets. Two million dollars an episode now, and uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. And uh, oh boy! And so he's saying all this outrageous stuff. Uh, but I don't know how outrageous he uh, he uh, this stuff is because um, it came out today on on the View they were talking about that. Uh, He's kind of having a feud with the the writer, I think executive writer, executive producer of the show, Chuck Lorre, and it uh, it came out that um, actually Chuck Lorre in uh, in the end of a show, uh, right where they do the Chuck Lorre Productions or whatever the heck it, his production house is. Um, he has this uh, called a vanity card, and he um, did it in Dharma and Greg, uh, a show from a few years ago. But he would put a, a lot of text uh, on that second, and if you're recording it, you can you can stop it and uh, and read it. Um, and uh, he had been putting de derogatory things. Uh, about Charlie Sheen saying that uh, hoping with all his drug use and uh, uh, sex with uh, multiple partners that he hoped he'd live longer than Charlie. And uh, there, w there was another vanity card that he was uh, uh, talking about Charlie too. So uh, no doubt Charlie is a little bit angered about that. And uh, I guess the guy has a right to be. A little bit angry, you know, to just uh, spew some venom back. And uh, he had been given drug tests, and uh, uh, those drug tests came out clean. So uh, even though he's been spewing on the radio and, and now doing TV interviews, uh, it's not uh, fueled by, uh, by whatever... Uh, uh, medications uh, he had used to take, had been taking, uh, uh, cocaine, uh, I, I don't know if they're testing for alcohol, but uh, marijuana, just a whole uh, whole list of, of things. But you know what I better do is I better show my clips. And uh, what I, uh, what I'm going to show is, uh, is clips of uh, Saturday, where uh, the temperature was in the teens, uh, 17, 15 degrees, something like that. Um, it was snowing, and uh, it was the biggest crowd um, for any of the rallies so far. Uh, last Saturday was a big crowd. The police estimate was 68,000, and uh, the estimate that I read in the press today was uh, was 70,000, and it seemed like there was twice as many people there. So I don't know how they came up with 70,000, and t twice 68,000 equals 70,000, but uh, uh, I, I did actually see an estimate of, uh, of 100,000 uh, somewhere today. But... Uh, Anyway, we better see the clips because I'm going to run out of time and i got to get this thing back to the station. <laughs> and so here are the clips. I'm not going to do a commentary over them. They're uh, of the rally on Saturday. Uh, and uh, here they are. <laughs>
never been more people here. All right? I am coming home probably in about 20 or 80 minutes trying to walk out of here. Well, there you go. Oh, and I'm echoing. Am I at a rally? And therefore, no, I got to hit the mute here. Sorry about that. I was uh, listening <laughs> listening to the sound of the rally uh, as I was viewing the clips and uh, left the sound up. So uh, anyway, that was the rally. Uh, uh, and uh, oh, I, I should mention that my show last week um, that I showed clips of the Capitol protest and talked all about it um, is on YouTube and so you can go to youtube.com if you got one of those uh, those new computer things and uh, just uh, search for my name uh, DW Wanberg without any spaces or periods uh, or dashes or lines DW Wanberg and you would find uh, my last week's show, um, and if uh, you're sick of the Capitol protests, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think they may be going on for a while. Uh, uh, Mr. Scotty doesn't seem to want to budge at all, so uh, who knows. But anyway, <laughs> if you're sick of the protests, uh, I've got many other things on, on YouTube. Uh, to uh, delight and entertain you. I've got my uh, show from uh, two weeks ago, which uh, featured the the National Snow Sculpting Competition, um, and uh, went down to Lake Geneva to shoot video of that, and, uh, and I've got 40 some odd other things, and mostly all, I tell you. Uh, so uh, check out my YouTube site, and uh, Hopefully, I, I'll get you some of the stuff that I had hoped to bring uh, this week on the Capitol protest, but um, I'll probably shoot new footage. Uh, uh, maybe i got to get myself a press pass to get into the Capitol. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, this is D.W. Wanberg thanking you for watching. Saying adios so long, and uh, I gotta take the escape slide out of here. <laughs>